Hi, I'm Eileen Roach from Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'm happy to be here today with you. I imagine, like me, you've been making masks and you're probably looking for some creative ways to update them. So I have some fun ideas for you, and I'm actually going to share some free designs later in the broadcast. But first, before we get started, it might be good to find out where you are watching from and what you're working on. So if you could just post a comment and let me know what you're working on, I'd love to hear about that. Um, I've been making some masks and you know what else I started last weekend was a Lone Star quilt. It's been on my bucket list for uh, many years to attempt a Lone Star quilt, you know, in the traditional manner, cutting out the diamonds and piecing them together, not cheating in the hoop. <laughs> so um, it, it, I've had a lot of fun doing it and I'm really excited to get to the quilting part. And when I do that, um, I'll probably share a, a bit of that process with you. So hi, Sharon Mueller, you're in Virginia. Thanks for joining us today. It's great to have you here. And Sharon, you've been working on masks and scrub hats. Well, that's great. I like that. And Gail, you have um, masks on your schedule too, on your uh, workspace. I like that. So, oh, and Delia Flores, you're working on the May door. Well, uh, you might be interested in seeing some of the ones that I'm going to share today. Today, Hi, Dory from Naples. Always nice to have you here. And Isabella Brian from France, you're back. That's great. And Susan in Ohio, you just made yourself two new summer tops. Well, that's a great idea. I like that. Good for you. Um, well, I did my t-shirt last night and it, it was, uh, I had it all, you know, um, make it a little bit smaller. It was too big. So that was fun. And Tina, you are in Lexington, South Carolina, and you're shopping for a new embroidery machine. Ha ha. Well, I bet there's some dealers that would love to hear from you for sure. I wonder what you're thinking about buying. So um, as a word of caution, I would suggest that you purchase by dealer and not really by brand because you're going to need some education and you're going to need technical support and also, you know, hardware support. So if you buy locally and you develop a relationship with that dealer, that's where you should buy. Yep. So, uh, okay. And Teresa in, in Lake City, Florida, you have masks on your agenda for the weekend too. Oh, I know. Hi, Roz from University of Maryland. Oh, I guess maybe you're working there today. And Beth, let's see, you've made 84 masks and you're selling them word of mouth. Good for you. Good for you. And hi, Amy McCarthy, always here. Uh, always great to have you here. Um, and you're working on the crazy quilt from my book. Awesome. Oh, and here's Sue Brown. Hi, Sue Brown. Thanks for joining us today. Okay, so let's go take a look at the May door. Shall we do that? All right, I have to... Um, okay, here we go. And, you know, this was the May, the May door, and that is still available. So you most certainly can go to that uh, our website and download it so that you can take advantage of it. It was a hospital, and it was a shout out to our essential workers around the globe, really, who are taking care of all of us. And, you know, I know that many people felt, um, many people felt that, oh, hang on a second, <laughs> that it was um, maybe, you know, a little upsetting to have a hospital as a door. Well, I understand that. I do, in retrospect. Uh, I've listened to your comments and I've read them on my blog and so forth. But on the other hand, you know, Miracles are happening in those hospitals too. And so it's great to recognize the positive side of that. So we had many um, people participate. Uh, here we have a shout out to the Highlands Oncology Group. And then I love the purple doors that we have on the right. And I apologize that I don't have the uh, creator's name attached, but I will update that and make sure that uh, we get that in the comments after the broadcast. So but I just love them. And they used a variegated thread on uh, the ambulance. I thought that was very nice. And I love the bright green on the sample on the right. 
And on the left, a bold blue door looks just great. And I think that the uh, the cement fabric that they chose in the, uh, on the far right is just delightful, just delightful. And here we have a great photograph of it, you know, on display, maybe by the front door where your mask is uh, stored on your way out. It's the last thing you grab, right? And I love this sample on the right. Now, we have a couple more that um, I love. I really like the cement fabrics that are chosen in these two. That's why I grouped them together there. I thought that was really very good. Um, and then the polka dots on the uh, door on the right, it's just beautiful. Now, notice the sample on the right. It says Carter Blood Care. And you know, Carter Blood Care is our um, North Texas blood bank. And I was just I mean, we found this Carter Blood Care door, you know, online. Some, some one of our viewers did it. I live here in North Texas. And my husband, my sweet Pete, is a uh, avid blood donor. He's a five gallon donor. He goes as often as they call. And um, it's, you know, he does it for several reasons. He's a kind hearted soul for sure and wants to do his part and always has felt that it's a way to give that doesn't cost him anything. It's also a way for him to continuously monitor his cholesterol because, you know, they do that for you when you um, give blood. So for him, it's a win win for sure. But I thought for those of you who don't really want to do a hospital door, I have an alternative for you. Now, you're going to have to do the work, but it's going to be very easy. You can do it at the machine or you can do it in software. So on the left, we have the emergency room, um, the standard May door. And then on the right, I've changed it into a city market. And it's so simple to do. So let's just take a look at what you would change. You would, instead of having the H for hospital in the top of the brickwork, you would put in an address like 125. And, you know, in a city, you often see uh, the address etched in stone on a building. So that's very common. Change the emergency to city market or something similar. Instead of heroes work here, I put the sign to say farmer's market today. And I took the red cross off of the window and I changed the word ambula to deliver. And I also skipped stitch, uh, I omitted the stitches on the, um, on the, on not the siren, what is that? The flashing light on top of the ambulance. And you know, it's a different, it's not a different color. It's in the design itself. It's a part, it stitches at the same time as the tail light. So you would just stay at the machine and just stop those stitches and it advance forward through those stitches so you don't actually stitch them. So I think that's a pretty good solution for those of you who, um, really don't want to have a dime door. But a lot of you do, you don't mind it. You don't mind it at all. Oh, and oh, well, that's really very lovely. Thank you. You make, I make your Thursdays great. Well, you know, you make my Thursdays great too. I love being here. I love doing this. It's, um, I've spent a lot of time on the road meeting people. And then for several ladies, I mean, for several years, I was just in the office. So it's a nice way for me to get out with um, people again. And Betty, you like that also. Well, me too. I think it's just a great solution. And that's the whole idea about the doors is for you to stretch your skills, is for you to, you know, really try to do different things. And that can be either at in digitizing software or right at the machine, right at the machine. So, you know, don't be afraid to use those machines and really stretch your limits. You know, when you get an embroidery design, it doesn't mean you have to stitch it in the exact format in the exact process that everybody says, um, you know, that is provided. Just make it your own for sure. So let's see, what is next? Well, um, I talked about, I told you I was gonna uh, talk about patches. So I thought I would give you a really cute way to decorate some math. And this is a patch that goes right on a mask. Here I have a fitted mask that has a sleeve opening for a removable filter for those of you who um, have essential care workers that really use that. And then here we have lips. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? So this is just a pleated mask and I don't have it on very straight, but you know, you, you could. So I think that's really a lot of fun and I'm gonna show you how to make those patches. We'll go do that. Um, <clears throat> over a camera too in a minute. So 
Let's take a look first at what I use to make these patches. Well, first thing I used, if you excuse me, <clears throat> the first thing I did was I used uh, my emoji software to make the embroidery design. So how about if we, if I show you how to do that real quickly, and then I'll show you how to make the mask. And I'll just sh um, share the screen. Okay, so I am in Perfect Embroidery Pro, but because I own all of our software, um, I can uh, access my emoji software and I will select a woman. And I'm not even gonna be concerned about her, although I could be, I could uh, select a, you know, uh, her face and then I could play with her eyes, but really I'm just concerned about her, um, her face and her lips. Where, oh, there we go, there's the mouth. So here we'll take a nice set of lips and um, say okay. And in this software, I will ungroup it. And then I will just select the lips, which is these two colors. And I will control C, control N for a new file and control paste. And there's my lips. I can make them a little bit bigger. And at this point, truth be told, I did add a satin outline so that it was a little bit more robust for the patches. Um, but super easy to do. So let's go ahead and do a new one and let's find the goatee. So this time in my um, selection of the type, I will select a man and with his mouth, I will, um, where is his mouth? What, oh, here we go, here's his beard. So I selected the very first one and said, okay. And it appears on the screen. And again, I just want to ungroup that. Now I could have spent a lot of time on this and made sure that this person, you know, that this uh, resembled someone in my family or something like that. But I'm just selecting that the mouth features and I'll do control C, control new and control V. And here is my goatee. Isn't that fun? Isn't that fun? It's so easy. Just a couple clicks, right? Oh, super easy. I love it. But now we actually have to get to sewing, right? And we're going to stitch it out. So I'm just going to show you the simple processes of how you do that. And uh, first, I'll just show you a couple of slides. And then I'll show you live how to do it. And before we do that, um, I have a couple comments that I want to share. Let's see. So Katie and Mart, she has an N95 mask and cannot breathe in the thing. She made a fabric mask with a thin stabilizer, can't breathe in it either. And what can I use and still be protected? Well, first off, you know, N95 is going to be the only one that gives you the true protection that is needed in a hospital setting. So these face coverings that we are making that are an awful lot of fun, I used uh, two layers of cotton quilting fabric. And then I am using our Poly Pro Performance, which is a polypropylene, which is right here, um, stabilizer. That's what I'm using as my filter. But I do have family members that work in the medical field. So they would use a mask like this, and then they would insert the uh, filter that they get from the hospital. Katie and Mart, I know it's hard to breathe through them. It just is. And but you know, the looser the weave, the less protection you get. So I do think it's a matter of uh, practice and becoming uh, accustomed to it. Yeah. So that's that that takes a little bit of time. That takes a little bit of time. And let's see. And Sue Brown, my emoji is how you did the sun sunset with Sue opening page. Oh, that's good to know. Very very good to know. Roz, yes, um, emoji is something that you need to buy, probably. You can put that on your list uh, for sure. It is something that you purchase through a dealer. Uh, but it is also, if you have embroidery tool shed, I think you can go there and uh, select um, in the shopping cart my pet, my pet, no, my emoji software, and then you can. Um, purchase there and select a dealer there. Let's see. And Dolores, you say the May is perfect, the May door, because it is, um, it's nurses week. Well, it should be nurses week all spring, I think for sure. All right. So let's go ahead now and take a look back over at um, PowerPoint. And so I can show you exactly what I am working on. 
And uh, I used our patch maker kit, and that's two stabilizers that it comes with. And it also comes with 20 really fun, small embroidery designs. They're literally about an inch, inch and a half and they're just super cute. They're kind of like embroidery sewing merit badges. I think they're adorable. And you'll when you purchase the Patchmaker kit, there's a link inside that uh, is provided for you to, to download all of them. So the first thing you do is you hoop the heavy water soluble stabilizer and you stitch your patches. And then just punch them out. You can cut it, but you could also just punch it out. And then with the patch, um, with the patch attach stabilizer, you place your patch wrong side up on a Teflon pressing sheet and then cover it with the patch attach with the fusible side down and press it in place. And you'll see that it kind of, you know, gets, looks like it's shrunk up a little bit because the adhesive is now melting into the patch. And when you pull it apart, you have to wait till it cools and then you release it from that adhesive, the, the adhesive is stuck on the back of the patch. And then at that point, you place it right side down on the fabric and um, it, then you just press it in place. So it's super easy to do. So how about if we, I show you exactly how to do it, uh, the goatee on a fitted mask and then the lips on a um, pleated mask. Now I always put the pipe cleaner in, in mine at the top, and this is a green pipe cleaner, it doesn't matter, nobody can see it, but it really does give a nice shape to all those masks, whether it's the pleated or it's the um, shaped. And I also have found that if I have the mask underneath my glasses, I have less chance of steaming up the glasses. Oh, who knew we would have to learn about this, right? Okay, let's see. Um, all right, so let's go on over and um, go over to the live cam. So you can see over there on camera two that I have uh, some of those patches in place. The, the ones that come with the embroidery design, aren't they fun? I just love them. First off, we stitched them in really fun, colorful colors and these are attached. These others are still loose, but super fun, easy to do. Okay, let's go ahead and move that out of harm's way. And I will then show you in a four by four hoop, I've stitched one set of lips. I did use a basting file because, you know, I have a layer of bridal illusion tool in here, netting. I don't have to have it, but you know, there's, I just think that it's a good idea. And then this is our heavy duty water soluble stabilizer. And then when I take that out of the hoop, I then have, I start trimming and I just trim nice and close to the edge of the satin stitches, the outline of the patch, what's gonna become the patch. And I just snip all the way around and move that out of harm's way. Now I wanna attach this adhesive. I don't know if you can see on the camera, but one side is shiny and bubbly and the other is just smooth. So it's the, the rough textured side that I want to place on the wrong side of the patch. And then you want to place that on either a protective piece of paper like parchment paper or maybe a, a leftover protective paper that's part of a sticky stabilizer or a Teflon pressing sheet. Of course, I left my Teflon pressing sheet at home. So this is actually a piece of protective paper from adhesive stabilizer, it does double duty. Okay, so I have everything in place, right? Here's my patch, wrong side up. The adhesive side is uh, touching the patch. And then I take my iron and I apply pressure and heat. And you really, you know, you have to hold this down for, I don't know, maybe if I were counting, it would be, 15, 10 seconds, and then you remove it. And you can, I can see that there are ridges, you know, that it, it appears to have adhered. Now, if it hasn't, you most certainly can go back and press again. There's no harm in repeated uh, steps in doing that. And then you do have to let it cool and um, before you separate it. But once it's separated, it, I didn't really let that cool, but um, 
Once it's separated, you'll notice that it has some of the adhesive, of course, is kind of tacky outside of the patch, and that's, that's fine. But now we just want to go and peel our patch right off. And if you have any excess of adhesive outside the edges, you can fold it in or you could trim it, which whatever your preference is. Now I have my pleated face mask and I did put it on and I marked where the vertical center would be and somewhat of a ballpark horizontal center. Here is the um, nose guard, right? The nose shape. So I know that I want my lips to go like up like this, or I would be pouting. I could go down like that, but probably don't want to do that. So I'm just going to align that so it's, you know, somewhat centered. It's not all that important to get it absolutely perfect. And then I am going to cover this with that paper again and then fuse it in place. Now, because this is pleated, I'm kind of pulling those pleats up out of harm's way. You know, this isn't very exciting um, video because, you know, everything's happening underneath the iron. But, you know, if you're doing this at home, that's where the action happens, right? And then once it's in place, perfect. Look at that. How fun is that? Super fun. So let's do the goatee so I can show you this is a little bit different in the sense that we have an opening, which is fine. I've already added the adhesive to the back, and this has cooled for quite a while. So, But you can see how it's kind of got a shiny film on it, right? So now I'm going to take a, a uh, tailor sleeve or ham, and I'm going to place my fitted mask over that. Now, you know, these are, there's no perfect shape. I could stuff this with batting maybe, but you know, this is a kind of fast down and dirty thing. So I am aligning the bottom of the goatee with just about the uh, tip of the face mask. And that center mark in, is going to align with the center seam, not the top stitching, but the center seam. And then I'm going to take my protective paper and I'm just going to fuse this in place one side at a time. So I'm going to hold it on down in place and I'm going to work my way around the mask. And it takes a little bit of time, not too much, just a little bit of time. Yeah. But, there, you know, it's we're beginning to wear these every day, right? They're beginning to become... Part of our identity. Uh, it's kind of like your handbag, right? The handbag that you carry every day. It's right by the front door, most likely, or wherever you keep it in your home, but you wouldn't leave home without it, right? Well, same thing with the mask. And, you know, it's fun to have a little personality with it. Fun to have a little personality. And there we have it. Isn't that great? So here, I'll bring that over on camera so you can see on the main camera, but isn't that so easy to do in just you know, how long did that take? No time at all. Super easy. Super easy. Okay. All right. So let's see. Uh, Susan, I like your comment. Everyone does deserve to be in a cute mask. Why not? I mean, I know we're going to be making them to match what our outfit and all that kind of thing, right? And uh, Betty Jenkins Cully, you say, at least with the patch, we can see some smiles. How true is that? And no lipstick, right? I, you know, one of the last things we often do is put lipstick on as we leave the house. And I hesitate because now it's going to get all over my mask. So I don't really want to do it. How does it hold up in the wash? It holds up in the wash. It's, it's washable for sure. Yep. And it'll stay on. If it doesn't, then you didn't apply enough heat or not a high enough temp. And, you know, I don't have a degree in home economics. So, and I don't know the temperature of my household iron. It doesn't, uh, it's not included on the packaging. So uh, just, uh, you can always reapply it, you know, add another uh, backing of adhesive and reapply it. Mm -hmm. How much is the patch maker kit? It's on special today. And I'm sure that Stephanie Smith is going to share that with us. Stephanie Smith is my team member who's working at home. She's not here uh, right now, so I don't have that. It goes on special tomorrow, but, you know, for Facebook Live, we do release that price um, pretty early So uh, today. So it's pretty fun. 
And Judy, oh, I'm glad that you enjoyed learning how to do it. And let's see, do I, and Gail wants to know if I remove my pipe cleaner for washing. No, I couch over the pipe cleaner in the seam allowance. So, you know, right sides together. So the lining and the backing together. And then I place my pipe cleaner in the center of that area and I couch over it in the seam allowance. And then when I'm turned right side out, it's captured in there, it's not gonna come off. With my pipe cleaner, I do make sure that I fold over those pointy ends because you know they can jab kind of through the fabric, they can break through the fabric. So I use uh, some jewelry tools to just turn that over real quick. Pair of pliers works too. You just wanna, you know, you don't want a sharp edge. Kind of think about an underwire bra, right? How uncomfortable they can be. Uh, let's see, Betty, you already have the patch cleaner and you never used it. Okay, you are home. You have no excuse. You should use it. This is the time, right? This is the time. Let's see. Uh, what other questions do we have? And, you know, it's so much fun next week talking about pipe cleaners and jewelry tools. Next week I'm doing jewelry here and I have a guest, Lisa Knight. She's going to be sharing with... Um, with me, she has made some really pretty um, jewelry through the years, and I have some new styles that I wanna share with you. So let's see. Okay, and Cheryl Hogan, you say you do the same thing to pipe cleaners and tell them to wash them by hand. Yep, not a bad idea, not a bad idea. Yep, and you put tape, uh, Deborah, on the end of your pipe cleaner. Well, that's a great idea. That, that's probably a very good idea. Yeah, I still like the idea of turning it down because you know, even if it's taped, it can poke through that tape pretty easy, pretty easy. Yeah, so next week um, we will be making jewelry, like I mentioned, and Elisa Knight will be my guest, so I'm really excited to have her here. And what else are you ladies working on? I wanna know how many of you are working on quilts um, because I, you know, that's something that's dear to my heart and I'm always, I'm always looking for ideas of maybe what kind of help you need, you know, because as we grow here and we want to do more, I want to make sure that we're addressing all of your, um, your needs. So in the comments, if you just let me know what you're working on. Misha, does the patch make it harder to breathe or does it add a slight filter as assist? Um, it, well, I wouldn't, I don't know if I wouldn't want to make the claim that it adds a filter assist, but it doesn't make it hard to breathe because it's, a fairly small area and actually on the goatee this is all open in here this is open and on the lips you know it that's really pretty small it's really pretty small so i i don't think it makes that much of a difference and bell akins you are working on quilt blocks are you doing them in the hoop or are you sewing ah and diane zimmerman you're working on a t-shirt quilt for your granddaughter's graduation i think that's what that means um and I'm wondering how you're going to quilt it. Are you going to manage that yourself? Or um, are you going to send that out? Are you going to do it free motion? Walking foot? Embroidery hoop? What, are your, what do you think you're going to do? Oh, well, Diane, I gave you three options. You can't just say yes. <laughs> Let's see. And Sue Godin, show us more machine embroidery for your charity quilts. Okay. Yep, we could definitely do that. Let's see. Uh, fix it to start a wall hanging for your mother-in-law for Christmas from Anita Good. Oh, they have beautiful way. Beautiful. And Belle, you're doing them both ways. Okay, let's see. And Deborah, I'm not going to try that last name. You just finished a quilt and plan and using the Luminera to quilt it. Good idea. Really, really good idea. Um, let's see. Memory quilt for your daughter with photos of school. Oh, that's wonderful. Really, really nice. Um, Really, really nice. Let's see. Uh, Gail, you would like to see some more edge to edge for quilts. Yeah, we do have some fun stuff coming up in June. More, um, you know, continuous embroidery, more quilting, all over quilting for sure. And uh, would you embroider on face mask? Would you not embroider on face mask fabric? You can embroider on face mask fabric. I mean, but you know that every needle penetration is a hole in the fabric. So you're going to make that tight weave fabric a little bit more open, right? And I would not want to have 
the um, raw, you know, the, the wrong side of the bobbins against, against my face. So I guess if you're lining it, it would be okay. But uh, really, I just think using a, um, using a, a, a patch is really so much easier. And then you can just mass produce all your masks and add patches, you know, at will for whoever you feel would like one. Let's see. And Janie, you are, are piecing a quilt and plan to quilt it in the monster hoop using your little quilting frame. Good. Love it. All on your Solaris. That's great. That's what we have in here. We have a Solaris here and I have a destiny at home. So that's really fun. Uh, really, really fun. You have embroidered on the side, just initials. Yes, I did show that uh, a couple weeks ago, a little monogram on, on the side or numbers even on the side. Yes. Um, and Walter Mary McNair wants to know are the Viking snap hoop is going to be open and uh, available in June, 2020. Well, I, it might be very late June um, or early, you know, or mid July. So we have made some progress. I can tell you that we've had uh, several different challenges, but this week has been a good one. So they are on order. And then, then we're at the mercy of our manufacturer. So pretty soon we will keep you posted. Definitely. Could you back the embroidery with interfacing and put in a lining? Absolutely, you sure could. And that would um, cover those needle penetrations that you added with the embroidery. So I would use uh, Fuso Soft, I think is the product that we make. It's a really lovely Trico knit interfacing that I often put on the inside of t-shirts like the shirt that I'm wearing today. Um, I would put that on the on the inside so that I don't have all those bobbin stitches touching my skin. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay. So um, next week when we do jewelry, um, we're going to do some earrings and also uh, a couple necklaces. And Lisa Knight is going to share um, her tips and techniques for that. Now, I don't know if you know Lisa Knight, but she's one of our dime inspiration consultants. She's from Las Vegas and she goes by the name of um, Las Vegas so girl. And so if you've had the opportunity to be um, on the road with her, you know that she shows up in a full headdress and all that. So she's an awful lot of fun, awful lot of fun. Okay. And Sharon, you want to hear more about thread that is for skin tones. Okay. We do have a collection of um, thread of our exquisite polyester thread that we have curated into a six pack of flesh tone threads, uh, you know, to mimic the skin tone. And we did that mainly for the My Emoji software. A lot of people struggle with finding those right colors. And that is available on our website now, I understand. It's just a new product and we haven't featured it here yet on Facebook Live, but we will for sure, because we're gonna be doing, um, you know, some, um, kind of portrait quilts, you know, in the hoop and so forth. And it will be perfect for that. Just perfect for that. So, well, I really appreciate you sharing uh, your time with me today. And I look forward to seeing you next week. We'll show more dime doors. And those of you whose images I showed of your dime doors, I plead, I hope you'll forgive me for not having your names. That was an oversight on my part, but uh, we most certainly can repost them on our page on Facebook and give you due credit. And next week, I will also include them in the broadcast with your name so that um, you get due credit. So I appreciate that. And I'm working on the June door and I'm really excited. It's gonna be a fun celebration one. So, uh, it, we look forward to that. And so I'll see you next week, one o'clock right here. Thank you.